Hey guys, it's Darwin. It's that time yet again to answer more of your questions. So, like all of my Q&As, this month I polled everybody over on the community tab. Now, if you didn't get a notification that I'm asking for questions to answer, all you have to do is go up and click that little notification bell, and then next month when I put a post up asking for questions, you can leave them over there. I'll answer them here. It'll be a good time, I promise. So, let's go ahead and get into some questions that I got last week. What is your favorite environment to hike in? Desert, alpine mountains, forest, etc. So right, if you've been following along on my channel for about the past two years, you'll know that one of my favorite environments to hike in is the desert. Um, as much as I do love being in the forest and being in mountains and being around lakes and stuff like that, I love hiking in the desert. And I think that there's probably something wrong with me. I actually like being hot. I like it being exposed. I like cactus. I like that rough, tough desert hiking. And it's probably because I'm originally from Indiana and I'd never seen the desert before moving out to the Southwest and it had a huge impact on me and I just love it. I love trying to figure it out. It's a very hard environment to hike in. It is harsh. The sun can just beat the crap out of you. Sometimes you have to carry a lot of water, but I don't know, it's challenging. I like a challenging hike. I like technical hiking. So the desert is my favorite environment to hike in. Are you always looking for new gear to save weight or smaller size or multiple uses? So there's about two reasons that I constantly switch out and use new gear. Number one is just to do research. There's so much gear out there to try and use from tents to backpacks to shoes. I like trying new things so I can figure out, you know, is the thing that I'm using the best for what I'm doing? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Maybe there's something better out there. Maybe there's something more efficient. Plus, I love to gather information so I can make content, whether it's a YouTube video or it's over on my website, theoutdoorevolution.com, so I can share information with other people that are looking to get into hiking. And the second reason is because of efficiency. It's all about being efficient. And sometimes weight and size and having multiple uses does factor into that, but for me, it's all about ease of use. So when I'm doing a through hike and I personally am pushing something like 20 or 30 miles a day, I want something that's efficient. I wanna know that the tent that I'm gonna be in at night um, is not gonna get super condensation-y. I wanna make sure that it's easy to set up. I wanna make sure that it's gonna last for two to 3,000 miles during that hike. And when it comes to shoes, I wanna make sure that I'm having something comfortable. I wanna make sure that they're easy to put on and take off. I wanna make sure that they're drying out easy. So there's a lot of factors that go into that, but for me, it's all about efficiency and being simplistic. I think a lot of people get obsessed with weight. And yes, I do use things that tend to be lighter and we talk about weight, right? In a gear review, I'll talk about how many ounces something weighs because that does matter to people. And to a degree that does matter to me, but the main point for me is always efficiency. If you had to take one stove system, would you alcohol, Esbit, Snow Peak Light Max, Jet Boil, or equivalent? So about two, three weeks ago, I made a video about going back to the stove. And in that video, I said it and I'll say it again, my number one stove that if I had to pick anything to take out on the trail right now is the BRS Ultralight Stove and the Snow Peak 700 titanium mug. That's my favorite cook system I've ever used out of anything. It's lightweight, it's super compact, it's simplistic, it works for me every single time, no failure, it's awesome, I suggest it. Would you consider doing the same through hike twice? Yeah, actually I would probably re through hike every trail that I've ever done. One of the main reasons that I'm going out to do the first five to 700 miles of the AT is because I want to experience that trail five years later um, knowing what I know now. I think there's something about always wanting to redo something because you have all the knowledge, you're not new to it, and it's just kind of cool to like return to a place you've been before. So that's one of the main reasons that I'm going out to do that first five to 700 miles of the AT. But yeah, I would totally read through hike the Penhody Trail. I would totally read through hike the Arizona Trail, the PCT. Yeah, all of them. Just because, again, I think it's fun to go back and relive and revisit that adventure and that time in my life. Describe your perfect pizza. Ooh, um, 
ranch is the sauce, so ranch base, uh, chicken, bacon, tomato, green chili with feta and mozzarella cheese, a little bit extra crispy. Oh, man, that sounds good. It's probably what I'm going to have tonight for dinner. Do you plan on doing hikes in South America? Yeah, actually. Um, so for the past two years, I've mentioned here and there that one of my places that I want to hike the most is down in South America, is going down and hiking in Patagonia, is hiking uh, around Peru. So next year, I'm actually making plans to go to South America in May. Now, I don't want to give too much away and tell you guys exactly what I'm doing, um, how long I'm going to be down there. But right now, it's about 80% sure that I'll be going to South America in May. So uh, keep an eye out and keep an ear out. And I'll give you guys more information about that at the beginning of the year. So as you acquire new gear, what do you do with your old gear? Sell on eBay? Donate? How do you keep things if you live in a small setting? So as I get new gear, I usually do a few different things. Number one, I do give a lot of my older gear that I'm not going to be using anymore to friends and family. So I have a ton of through hiker family, hiker trash family, tramly if you will, that I've met over the years and they're always constantly doing different hikes. And if I have something that I think that somebody can use, I always try to pay that forward and pass it along to someone else. Now if there's gear that I just don't really want to use anymore or maybe it's something that I got and didn't work out for me, Typically, I'll sell my gear over on some Facebook forums, some Facebook pages. So one of my favorite Facebook pages that I like to sell a lot of my used gear on is called Gear Rat Outdoors. I'll put a link to that below because you can usually find a ton of awesome used gear over there. But I've actually been kicking around the idea of making a page on my website, uh, darwinonthetrail.com, and basically posting my used gear over there. So if you guys would be interested in maybe, I don't know, buying up some of my old gear that I'm not using anymore, or maybe some stuff that I tried that didn't work, instead of me listing it on some of those forums, maybe I'll just start a page on my website and list that stuff for sale. So if that's something that you guys would be interested in, or you think that that's cool, or maybe you think it's a bad idea, leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts on that. And uh, I'll see what I can do over the next couple of weeks, but that would be kind of cool. How old are you? Uh, 35. 34? 35? 34. How do you recover after your long walks? Intrigued to know if you have a set routine after each hike. So I don't really have a set routine, but I try to go through some sort of physical therapy. Now whether that is from myself, so using things like muscle rollers, or getting massages or something, or last year when I got off the PCT, I actually went to a recovery clinic in Bend, Oregon called the Recharge Center and spent about five days um, going to a chiropractor, uh, getting massages, using compression boots, and really getting my body back in order. But aside from that, I try as much as I possibly can to work on myself on the trail. Now, whether that's taking my trekking pole and using it as a muscle roller and getting out some of those knots, or last year on the PCT, I actually picked up a muscle rolling massage ball that I used quite a bit. So I'd put it on the ground and kind of rub my foot on it, or I'd take it and rub it on the back of my calf. And recently, I actually picked up a new massage ball from a company called Rawology, Rawology, um, and they're made out of cork. As you can see, it's really small, and I like it because it's super lightweight, it's really compact, I can throw it in my pack, and then at the end of the day, when I'm at camp, if I'm having some sort of a tight muscle, or maybe a tendon's not feeling so good, I can just whip this guy out and I can roll it on that muscle and get those knots out so I don't get further injury. So it's something I've really been trying to focus on over the past year, especially since I got off the PCT, is trying to make sure I'm staying on top of treating myself and giving myself good recovery so I don't get those injuries and it screw up my hike in the long run. You inspired me to try and through hike next year on the PCT, sweet. How can I get up to 20 to 30 miles a day this off season? So just because I hike 20 to 30 miles a day doesn't mean that everyone needs to hike 20 to 30 miles a day. Some people need to just hike 15 miles a day. Some people just need to hike 10 miles a day. Do whatever makes you comfortable. So the reason I hike big mileage 
is because I just hike fast. So if I'm only doing 15 miles in a day, I tend to get up pretty early at like 4 a.m. I start hiking at five. So I can knock out 15 miles pretty early and I'm just not one that likes to sit around. I don't like to sit around at camp. You know, if, if I get up at four, I start hiking at five and I do 15 miles, odds are I'm gonna be done by like one o'clock. And I don't wanna sit from one o'clock until sundown just sitting in camp, so I like to keep moving. So that's typically why I hike 20 to 30 miles a day. But in answer to your question, how do you get up to 20 to 30 miles a day? It's really just kind of training your body. You know, at first, I can't hike 30 miles a day. It doesn't matter what trail I'm starting. I can't do 30 miles right out of the gate. It's hard doing 20 miles right out of the gate. It's just getting your trail legs, getting your body used to doing that mileage every day. And after that, it just becomes easier. Your body gets used to it. That being said, after a while, it does start breaking your body down. And it's good to kind of back off on those miles and then put them back on here and there so you don't injure yourself and overdo it. How come you don't walk much? What? I've noticed that many of the through hikers are not using the freeze dried meals like Mountain House or Backpackers Pantry. I'm curious why that is. Cost, calories, water? So for me, it's a little bit of all of those things. Number one, they are expensive. It's like seven to $10 for one of the big meals. So if you're looking at Backpackers Pantry, it might be seven bucks for a meal that one is massive and takes up a ton of room in your pack, but two really doesn't have that many calories. You know, I think one of those has like 450 calories in it, and that's a good one. 450 calories is good for one of those freeze-dried meals. Whenever I can buy something cheaper at like two bucks for a Nora rice side or a mashed potato, and I can get the same amount of calories. Plus it takes up less room. And over time, is the Mountain House maybe better quality meal than the Nora rice side? Yeah, sure. But if you're buying those every day, for four to five months, that gets super, super expensive, where a Nora rice side or an instant mashed potato or couscous only costs like maybe a dollar to two dollars per meal. So much easier, it's more available when you're going into a town, so if you're not going into an outfitter that carries things like Mountain House and Backpacker's Pantry, you might just have to go to a Dollar General, or you might have to go to a random grocery store or sometimes even a convenience store or gas stations, and you're not gonna find those freeze-dried meals, you're gonna find things like ramen noodles, like nor rice sides, like instant mashed potatoes. So that's why most of us eat that. Favorite part of the Appalachian Trail? The first five to 700 miles, which again is why I'm gonna be shooting out there next year to re-hike that section in March. For me, the Appalachian Trail is all in those first five to 700 miles. I don't know why. I think after 700 miles, number one, it kind of started feeling like a job. Number two, it just sort of looks the same till you get to like New Hampshire. I really think the magical AT experience, that Appalachian mountain experience is really in those first five to 700 miles. So that would definitely be my favorite section of the trail. Have you hiked any of the Canadian trails? Not yet. Ding! When you were deciding on a rain jacket, why did you pick the Z-Packs over the Enlightened Equipment when the Enlightened Equipment is an ounce lighter? Just wondering your thoughts. So I actually have both of those jackets. So when I made the decision to start using the Z-Packs Virtus rain jacket, it's because the Enlightened Equipment one didn't exist yet. Um, so I actually have both of them. So I have the Z-Packs Virtus rain jacket, and I also have the Enlightened Equipment Visp. Um, I got this guy last year and I haven't really used it as much as what I use this, but why I typically pick this one over my enlightened equipment is just because of the fit. It's a little bit longer of a cut. I'm a pretty long guy, so I like the overall fit of it. Um, and I've just spent more time with it. I first got the Virtus rain jacket about two years ago and I've already blown through one, put like over 3000 miles on one of these rain jackets and it held up great, kept me super dry, it breathes really well. So I got a second one just because it's tried and true. Now I do plan on using the Enlightened Equipment Visp a lot more over the next year. And uh, we'll see if it stacks up to, you know, this guy, as much as I love this guy, I'm definitely interested in trying this a little bit more and spending a little more time because they are very similar. But that's the main reason 
why I picked this first because, well, this was out first and I've had this longer than I've had this. All right, guys, last question of this Q&A. How would you compare the grades of the different trails you've done? I know the AT is generally steeper than the PCT, but how do the CDT, AZT, etc., stack up? So for me, the hardest trail and the steepest trail is definitely the AT. Uh, they're older mountains. They're super steep. The way they graded that trail was you go to the top of every single mountain, you go right down to the bottom. You go to the top, you go down to the bottom, and it's that way all the way from Georgia to Maine. So the AT is definitely the steepest and hardest trail that I've done. Next would actually be the Arizona Trail, which I think kind of blows everybody away, but the Arizona Trail is not what a lot of people think. It's not at all just flat, sandy desert. There is some tough, steep climbs on the Arizona Trail and very hardcore, rocky terrain that you have to deal with. Next would probably be the Pinhoti Trail that I threw hiked last year. So it's the first 300, 325 miles leading up to the start of the AT, so it shares the same type of mountains. It's just as steep, it's just as rocky and rooty, and there's a lot of climbs that, again, go to the top of the mountain and go back down to the bottom. And then the last trail that I would kind of lump in there would be the PCT. For me, the PCT has been the easiest, easiest trail that I've through hiked. And when I say easy, I mean terrain, because the way it's graded is it was graded for equestrian, so horseback riding. So the climbs are much more gradual because they are graded for horses. And then the CDT, I've only really done all of New Mexico of the CDT, never really hiked any more of it, so I can't really give a full judgment of that entire trail. Uh, one of these days I'll through hike the whole thing and I'll be able to put that in the list, but right now I guess I would put that at the bottom because I've only done New Mexico of the CDT. So. Yeah, it would definitely be the AT, the Arizona Trail, the Penhody Trail, and then the PCT. All right, guys, that's all the questions that I have time for this month. If you want to ask a question for next month's Q&A, all you got to do is go up and hit that little notification bell. The next month, whenever I post looking for questions, you'll get notified. You can ask them over there. I'll answer them here. It'll be a good time. I promise. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.